welcome back to the channel so today we are in the c1 again and we're going to try and find maybe 0.1 of an horsepower by fucking about with the uh the spark plugs so what i'll do is i'll do a before run and where i'm going to go is i'm going to go uphill to load it up as much as possible and still got this anti-headache device in place pull I've just shown you looks slower and less exciting than it otherwise would that is the reason so anyway, let's let me get to the sparklers we'll do one at once nice and carefully yes and now that's out we can have a closer look at it and we can see that it isn't worn out but it is it isn't new either so it'll do it'll do we'll put it back in but what i want to do is i want to put a mark on it if you look at this electrode here and the earth earth strap whatever you want to call it comes around this is the open side of the plug so i'm going to put a line up the open side of the plug and that should be useful later but first we've got a couple of other things to do so first if we measure the gap of it now standard these are 0.9 mil and this is currently at 1.1 mil so it's a little bit bigger than standard which in an actual aspirate scenario where you're trying to gain as much power as possible a slightly bigger gap can be better if you're in a boosted application and you turn the boost whatever it's quite common to close the gap because you can blow the spark out but i don't think we've got much chance of that with this so let's uh, let's modify this sparkler further but first let's see what the spark's like as it is and that was hard to show them what i thought it'd be but what i'm actually going to do is if you see this this ground on this electrode for the spark plug now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut some of it off because Allegedly, if you have a design like this, it gives you a better and more consistent spark, which goes in the same direction every time. Um, now, it didn't really show up that well when I was trying to show you what it was like before, but if you look at a spark plug with a normal ground on it, the spark will jump to all different points on that. Um, if you do it like this, the idea is it jumps to the same point every time and gives you a better spark. So it might work, it might not do. I don't know if that's any better or not, but this is apparently, or allegedly, NASCAR technology. Yeah. Woo! All right. Is this a NASCAR? You driving really fast. She like bad boy. Now, if I remember that red mark that we put on, if we look down there, we can see that, even though I've chopped it off, the, um, the earth is pointing over the and we want it pointing over there. Now, there's arguments to say inlet valves is better or the exhaust valves is better. There seems to be more to say that the inlet valves is better, so that's where I'm gonna do mine. So that means now I've got to take it back out. And then I'm gonna put a copper washer on it to shim it out. And I'm gonna put it back in and then see where it ends up again. You can actually work out how many copper washers or whatever thickness you're gonna need if you can be bothered, or you can just keep on putting different ones in. Tighten them up. So it's pointing out by the exact same amount, but in the other direction. So it seems that these washers are the right thickness to give you three quarters of a turn. And as a result, I'm going to put in too much of them onto each spark plug to make it point the right direction without bringing it further out the combustion chamber than what I'd like to. So I've got one of these washers, which, now these are easier to manipulate because they like a but to be honest, it's a bit like the original washer on the spark plug before it gets crushed. And um, you have an air gap inside them, so you can tighten them up enough, but you get like quite a lot of turn. B 
before it goes too tight where it's going to pull the threads where it is tight enough to seal so i'm going to try one of these anyway so the trick is is i'm not going to talk it up i'm just going to do it so it's nipped up like so and then it is pointing it's actually pointing towards it needs to go three quarters of a turn around pretty much and this washer should let me do that quite easily Yes. Now, as we can see, the marks are pointing towards the inlet. So I'm going to do the same thing for these other two plugs off camera, and we'll see where we're at. That's two, and that is three. Now, the middle one, I did actually end up using one of these standard type washers. The other two, I had to use the, comp the extra compressible. They're all compressible, but them ones are like really compressible so they give you a lot more room to play with as I said so let's put all this back together now let's see if it actually runs yes So far it seems to run in an identical manner as what it did before I started fucking about with it. So at least we've not made it worse, or it don't seem to have made it worse yet. Yes. And before I go and actually test it in an ultra scientific manner, I'll just give you a quick explanation as to what I've actually done. So, as you saw, I've cut the electrode down. Now this is supposed to give you more consistent and better, stronger spark, whether it does or not unsure but it's rumored to have been something that's done by nascar people and as everyone knows nascar is just as much or even more technologically advanced as what formula one is obviously Woo! yeah um the other thing about it is is when you cut the the tip off it's supposed to make the plug last a lot less time so it, it makes it obviously not last as long because there's not as much metal for it to burn away at um the other thing is, is turning it to point at the inlets now that's sort of pretty self-explanatory, but basically when the air comes in, some people turn away from the inlets because the the shield, if you will, the air rushing past it, blowing the spark out, is supposed to sort of cover it up from that. Or when the fuel mix is coming in, it gives it a better boom. Whether it works or not, it seems to add a couple of horsepower and a dyno on something that actually has some power on this, probably nothing. But we'll find out, so let's go and see. And I can immediately tell you that, well, so far, when doing normal driving. It feels exactly the same. I mean, it feels fast, actually, because I've been driving the Peugeot, so compared to the Peugeot, even this feels fast. But yeah, so far, I've not noticed any difference. It's not actually uphill, it's, it's, I went to the same place to do the same test and it, it starts off sort of downhill and going around a bit of a bend and then it goes into uphill for the, for the end of it. It's not all uphill that section. Um, but I'll put the side by sides at the end and make of it a what you will. But now I am going uphill and I'm in fifth gear doing 30 mile an hour. And while it's not the most exciting thing in the world, it does seem a little bit less fluttery than what it did before. If that makes sense. It seems more comfortable at near tick over, you know, when you're pulling. Um, I didn't notice this at first until I tried it, and it, it is definitely, it's, it's definitely smoother at this sort of RPM range. I don't know if it's out and out faster. I haven't put the footage side by side yet. I'll do that at the end, then we'll see. Uh, I'll say make up your own mind on that. So anyway, that's going to be it for this one, I think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.